Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Colton Posey Fishing. And today we're going to talk about the shad spawn, the baits that I use and the areas that I check out. This is something you don't We're going to talk about the shad spawn, the baits that I use in the areas that I look. So first, let's start with the areas. Okay, a shad will spawn on uh, willow grass. They'll spawn on floating docks. They'll spawn on a piece of trash that's in the water. It does not really matter to them. Um, one of the things that I tell people, if you want to find a shad spawn, look for birds. Birds will give away a shad spawn like that. You might not see it immediately, but if you get over there where the birds are, you're going to find the shad spawn. But those birds know where those shad go, so uh, animals can tell you a lot about other animals. So, what does a shad spawn look like? It's something that's unmissable. It looks like a washing machine going off in the water. It's just water churning and stuff like that. It's one of those things that if you ever see it, you you can't unsee it. You know what it is immediately. It's like seeing bass on your fish finder. And once you see it, you know it's bass. So, um, let's just say, oh, you're in a scenario and you see a shad spawn going over there and you start throwing baits and you don't get bit. A lot of times, well, I'm not gonna say a lot of times, it's very rare, but it does happen. If you get on a shad spawn and you're not getting bit with the bass, um, then sometimes they might not be where those shad are spawning just yet. So you might have to backtrack a little bit. But typically nine times out of 10, you will get bit on a shad spawn. So uh, if you do go to a shad spawn and for some reason you can't get fish to bite, then don't feel bad, it does happen. Don't, don't think that that's not important or that you don't need to go look for somewhere else for another shad spawn. Those fish are just, they're not there yet, so. The baits that I use, let's start with the fun stuff. The first thing that I really like to throw is a buzz bait. Now this is a buzz toad solid white. It, I don't really know if it looks like a shad or whatever, but they'll eat it, I, it's fun. Um, this is a Strike King buzz toad. And uh, I throw this thing this time of year, I throw it on 25 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon. And I've got it on a Ducket Silverado. This is a seven foot six um, medium moderate action. This is a heavy cranking rod. The reason that I throw it on a seven foot six medium moderate, I got that 25 pound fluorocarbon. And fluorocarbon, it has stretch, but it doesn't have a whole lot of stretch. This seven foot six, the parabolic bend of the rod allows me to make very, very long casts. Not only that, if I get a hook up, I'm not, I, it's got a little bit of give, so the fish has time to come up, get it, and suck it in their mouth, and then I can set the hook. So that's the first one. The other fun one, old school, a heading torpedo. This thing right here is so simple. That's just, it's a bait with a little propeller on it. Basically, I work this thing like a popper. I'll throw it in the middle of that shad spawn, and I just pop. It'll just might, it might sound just like a, so it might throw a little bit of a bubble and stuff. They'll come up and just smoke it. Um, it's a very, very simple bait. You ain't got to change the hooks or nothing out on it because you can't change the hooks out on it unless you cut the hooks off. So, um, but I've, I've never really had that much trouble with hookup ratios. Once again, I'm throwing a duck at Ghost. Uh, this is a, a medium powered rod, six foot, 10 inch. Uh, I don't like something super long. I'm not casting this thing a hundred miles. Um, Plus, I like something short because these treble hooks with that medium, um, it's got a good bend in the rod. So, you know, I ain't got to worry about ripping them treble hooks out, stuff like that. And always, when you're throwing top water, make sure you're using monofilament. Um, monofilament floats, fluorocarbon sinks. What happens a lot of times, the fluorocarbon starts to sink and it'll pull the nose of the bait down and the bait won't act right. Not saying you're not going to get bit on it, but I am saying it's not going to make the bait work the way it's supposed to. So, that can affect stuff. So another really, really fun one uh, that I like to throw, this is a um, jackhammer, chatterbait, solid white. 
mimics the shad very, very, very well. I'm skipping this thing under docks. I'm throwing it around willow grass, wherever I see that shad spawn. Um, typically what I run on it is just a uh, little uh, young, well, I got it in the back compartment. I'm not even going to worry about it. Y'all can look it up. It's a young pulse shad. I'm just throwing the white one uh, just to help everything kind of blend together. Um, it puts off a good vibration. I like the jackhammers just because it, it's a completely different vibration than the other chatterbaits. They're very, very good chatterbaits. They are expensive. I don't own, but very few of them just because they are so expensive. And if I get hung up, I'm going in after it. <laughs> so I'm a cheapskate. I don't care if I had $10 million, I would go in after a $5 crankbait. That's just the way I am. My wife will tell you, I'm a cheapskate. I can't help it. Stuff happens. So, uh, oh, my setup, my setup. I'm sorry. Kind of jumped ahead of myself. Sorry, guys. Kind of getting everything uh, together. I'm throwing a seven foot medium heavy black ice ducket rod. Um, the reason I like the black ice is because if I'm making multiple casts and stuff, it, it's a very, very, very lightweight rod. So I can make those multiple casts and, you know, stay true. And uh, not, I just don't get fatigued as much as possible. So another bait that I really like to use. Spot sticker spinner bait. This is the lavender shad. It's got the two willow blades that silver with a little bit of purple flake in them. I can burn this thing. I can make those things react before they even see it. So uh, that's a really good spinner bait. It's a really good trick during the shad spawn. Also, if you want to find the shad, whether it's during the shad spawn or uh, later on in the day when they quit spawning, you can actually use this and they will follow your bait. Early in the morning, they will actually try to spawn with your uh, spinner bait. So you might feel those little ticks that feel like brim. That shad trying to spawn with your spinner bait had it happen a couple weeks ago on Bear Creek. Okay. Um, oh, my setup. If y'all don't know my spinner bait setup, I'm sorry. Go back two, three, 15 videos ago. And uh, it's a seven foot ducket triad, medium heavy, seven one one to gear ratio reel. Um, uh, it's micro guides. I can I can cast that thing. I can knock the nuts off a fly from a hundred yards away with that thing. Not really, but I can make very very accurate casts. One thing I did forget to cover on the chatter bait. Um, I like a slower gear ratio, so I'm running a six eight to one gear ratio on the chatter bait, just because a lot of times we're getting up in really really tight cover, and I want to be able to pull those fish out. So, and all this stuff, I'm not going to go into line. The only line that you need to remember is monofilament for the uh, uh, top water bait. The reason I'm not going to go into line because it all depends on what kind of structure you're fishing. So obviously, if you're fishing around rocks, don't use eight pound test because you're going to shred your line. It's going to break every time. Go to something more intelligent that you would think of in your brain. Use 12, 15, something like that. I see so many guys running like six pound tests and stuff on stupid stuff. That old boy the other day, he was running like six pound braid or something like that trying to flip huh like dude you've lost your mind is it's not gonna work oh, oh yeah it'll work yeah after about 10 breaks he's like okay well maybe <laughs> so you know use a little bit of common sense y'all get the line down um another one a swim jig a swim jig works very very well uh to help mimic those fish especially if they're a little bit um um finicky it doesn't have any blades or anything like that it's basically a spinnerbait without blades uh, I can skip this. I can do whatever I need to do with it. I'm typically throwing a uh, rage swimmer or something like that on it, some type of swim bait, a little bit beefier. Um, I throw this on a 7 foot 4 inch heavy action rod. It's all preference. I like the 7 foot 4 inch. I've always just did well with swim jig on a 7 foot 4 inch heavy rod or just any kind of heavy rod that's in that 7 foot to 7 foot 4 range. Um, another one that I run the whole time during the shad spawn, I even run this during the fall. It's the American Shad Color uh, Lucky Craft Square Bill. So, uh, as you can see, I mean, it just looks like a shad. It's just silver and blue and purple and pink and just a rainbow crankbait. I don't know, but it, it just it works very very well. That chrome really, really really stands out to them, and it helps mimic those bait fish very very well. The setup that I'm using is a seven foot medium moderate action ducket green ghost this is a, a cranking rod specifically made for cranking and i'm throwing a six eight one to one gear ratio dial wheel reel 
Um, now on my crankbaits, I'm typically running 12 pound test. On my square bills, I'm running 15, just because I'm putting it in a lot of tight places up against trees and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm getting a lot of abrasion, or uh, I want a very, very high abrasion resistant line. So I want to throw, you know, heavy pound test in case I hook that hog. It's way back here in the middle of nowhere doing nothing. And see what y'all done did? Y'all done made me hook my rod, rod sock. Lord have mercy, I'm gonna dig that out. Anyways, uh, another one that I really, really like to use. I'm not gonna pull this all the way out. I ain't got to. So this is a duck at Green Ghost, uh, six foot nine. Yeah, six foot nine medium action rod. And uh, I use this rod pretty much just for flukes. So I'm running zoom flukes. I'm running the young breaking shads and stuff like that on this. A uh, fluke is a great bait to target those fish um, this time of year. And I said I wasn't gonna break this out, but I'm gonna do something special for y'all. A lot of people say, do y'all, do you not get annoyed by flukes by the amount of fish that you miss? And I say, no man, I hardly ever miss fish on a fluke. How's that possible? I'm just good like that. Not really, I'm gonna show you a little trick. This is a secret, so don't tell nobody. I got 24,000 views. Y'all don't tell nobody. I won't keep it between us and another 24,000 watching this stuff. No, I got like 24,000 views and all my stuff. But I, guys, I really do appreciate all the support. I appreciate y'all watching and putting up with me and stuff like that. I hope y'all are catching more fish. I have a lot of feedback from y'all saying that you are and you ain't. You may be and sometimes you can. And I don't know. But I appreciate helping y'all. And I appreciate everything y'all do for me. Because, uh... If it wasn't for y'all, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. So, fluke. Let's get a fluke out here. I'm just going to use, I guarantee most of y'all probably use Zoom flukes. And I've always used them. I've always, I've always used them. Ah, that's hard to beat. But, let's see here. Uh, Hold on, guys. This is my juniors. These are my little fellers. Lord have mercy. Where you at? Give me one more second. Here we go. Okay. So, I run a 4 alt Gamakatsu EWG deep throat hook this makes a world of difference um basically i'm rigging this thing you typically i guarantee 90 percent of you would rig it just like this you go through the nose and you come out right here in the belly just like that right there's your belly and then slide this sucker up spin it around and it's rigged I don't rig it that way for one reason. If they are short striking my fluke that day, I do the exact opposite. I rig a sucker backwards. Cause all it does is just change which side the fluke's gonna be laying on. They don't care. As long as it looks like a dead bait fish, they don't care if it's laying upside down, sideways, straight up and down, it don't matter. So I take, I push this sucker through the back. So as you can see, it's going out the back, not not in the gut right here where it's empty. But I take this thing, I roll this sucker all the way up just like that. I want this, the head of my bait, above my knot. That's a big key, um, especially when skipping around docks and stuff like that, because you'll you'll mess your knot up pretty bad. So now I go through the belly. Bam! I never even stuck that in the bait so it's just like that right so you're thinking well you know if they if they still you know grab the back end of it well, this is where this comes in handy well let me see if i can find another one where's the other one yeah right here it is all right so this is where this comes in handy if they're short striking it they're maybe they're coming up you're seeing them grab it and you're getting you know uh kind of anxious with it and jerking it out of their mouth let's say they grab the back of this Start missing them, several of them. So this thing's not tech exposed. So I don't, I don't have this uh, sticking in any part of the rubber. 
Kamikatsu has got these trailer treble hooks. It's got the little rubber thing in it. You see where I'm going? I take this thing and I slide it up on my hook just like that. See how it's up there? I take this thing and it's just like that. That rubber holds it in place just like that. It stays below the uh, tail and I sit there and work that thing. Now, another way so then you got trouble hooks. See what I'm saying? See where I'm going. So another thing that I will do. If it seems, oh, these things are aggravating to get off though. That's one thing I forgot to mention. They are, they are like pulling teeth. I got it though. One thing I did forget to mention, if you want to give your bait a little bit different action but still have that trailer hook on it, I'll rig it up the way everybody else does. So I'll rig it. Bam, come straight through here. But the only difference is, when I pull it up right there, I just, I go in, in my fluke. But before I do that, obviously I put the trailer hook on and I slide it all the way up here. So then I basically got that belly hook. So guys, there's a free, give me nothing tip on flukes that uh, I use to help me catch fish on flukes. Um, I didn't do it in my live video because I didn't want a lot of people knowing about it. Now y'all know about it, so now you can use it. Hopefully you'll enjoy your fluke fishing a lot more. So guys, those are all the baits that I use to target the fish during the shad spawn. And once again, the little little trick for all you fluke fishermen also like always if you feel like the information that i'm giving you is valuable and not a waste of your time go down there hit that like button and subscribe it helps me out a lot i really appreciate it guys thank you oh thank you for watching <music>